Hello, you are listening to the Bible Brodown Podcast, where two brothers come together to rightly divide the Word of God and sharpen one another. Today, it'll actually just be me. The other co-host, Matt, is currently uh, fighting hurricanes and uh, helping people who have had their houses flooded. He lives in Texas, and uh, he lives in the in the Lumberton area, which has been hit, and so is Beaumont, which is right next to him. And he's just been helping out all those who are around there. So I'm going to try to fill in a, a hole here of our, of our show and get some discussion going on out there. So today I wanted to talk about the cross and what it accomplished. Oftentimes when discussing the cross, people begin by going to the big words that are associated with the cross, like propitiation or atonement. They then begin defining these words today and applying that understanding to what the cross accomplished. This is how, for example, we get the penal substitution theory. In this theory, Christ's death on the cross actually paid which is propitiation, the just penalty for sin. It goes that men have a debt to sin, and Christ, through his death, satisfied that debt. This theory goes on to say that if Christ paid the debt of unbelievers, then there is no reason at all to punish them. Thus, those that hold to this theory believe in what's called limited atonement, in which Christ only died and paid for the sins of the elect. So what what I want to do, uh, however, is look at the cross through the lens of the Old Testament, and in doing so, we will see how the exact language used to describe the Israelites being freed from Egypt and why they were freed is the exact language we have of Christ and the cross for all mankind. So regarding all of Israel, the Lord purchased them all. Now think about this. The entire nation of Israel was subjugated and enslaved to Egypt, and the Exodus, through the, through the Passover, God freed Every single one of them. Exodus fifteen sixteen says, Terror and dread fall upon them. By the greatness of your arm, they are motionless as stone, until your people pass over, O Lord, until the people pass over whom you have purchased. So the language we have of the Lord and the Israelites from Egypt is that he purchased them from Egypt. He also bought them and established them all. Deuteronomy 32 6 says, Do you thus repay the Lord, O foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father who has bought you? He has made you and established you. So the nation of Israel were purchased and bought and made and established by the Lord. Every single one of them, all of them, were purchased, bought, and established by the Lord. And the same other language that is used of all of them is he ransomed and redeemed them all. Jeremiah 31 11 says, For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and in this instance he's referring to the nation of Israel, for the Lord has ransomed Jacob and redeemed him from the hand of him who was stronger than he. So Israel was succumbed to the Egyptians after Joseph went there. You know, they, they, they overpopulated and, and Egypt put them all into slavery. And the Lord ransomed and redeemed the entire nation of Israel from Egypt. And all were purchased and redeemed to be the tribe of his inheritance. Psalm 74 2. Remember your congregation which you have purchased of old, you which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your inheritance, and this Mount Zion where you have dwelt. So the Lord purchased, redeemed, ransomed all of Israel to be the tribe of his, of his, of his inheritance. There wasn't one Israelite left over that he didn't purchase and redeem and to be the tribe of his inheritance. So they're all purchased, bought, redeemed out of slavery so that they might serve the Lord. This is exactly what the Lord tells Moses, why I have freed them. All right, Exodus seven sixteen says, you shall say to him, this being, this is God speaking to Moses in, in, in reference to Pharaoh. You shall say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews sent me to you saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness, but behold, you have not listened until now. Exodus 8.20, Now the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh as he comes out to the water and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Exodus 9.1, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to the Pharaoh and speak to him. Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. You can also find this <clears throat> um, all throughout the, the entire Exodus story. This is why God wanted Moses to free his people so that they might serve him. It wasn't a guarantee that they are going to serve him, but they might serve him. Uh, also, we read in Isaiah 43, 20-22 that this is another reason. 
The beasts of the field will glorify me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I have given waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. The people whom I formed for myself would declare my praise. Yet you have not called on me, O Jacob, but you have become weary of me, O Israel. So God chose them and redeemed them and ransomed them and formed them so that they would declare his praise. That's what he wanted for them. He wanted them to serve him and to glorify him. Thus he had freed them, he redeemed them, he purchased them, he bought them, he saved them, he, he freed them all from slavery. So the people of Israel received a reprieve from the Lord's immediate judgment of death through the blood of the Passover lamb. Every Israelite that was in Egypt was just as bad of a sinner as everyone else. But the Lord reprieved his judgment on them through the Passover lamb. Through the blood of the unblemished lamb, God passed over their sin and they were freed from captivity. They were freed and passed over so that the Lord could offer and lead them to salvation and entry into the promised land. Think about that. Every single one was freed so that the Lord could lead them to the promised land. Israel was formed, like all of us, and purchased, bought, and redeemed from bondage. They were freed and purchased so that they could serve the Lord. By being freed, the Lord would lead them by his spirit and offer them the bread and water. But even though all were freed, they did not all serve him. Exodus 14, 10 to 12. As Pharaoh drew near, the sons of Israel looked, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. And they became very frightened. So the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, Is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us in this way, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt, saying, Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Nehemiah 9.17 says, They refused to listen and did not remember your wondrous deeds which you had performed among them. So they became stubborn and appointed a leader to return to their own slavery in Egypt. Deuteronomy 1 verses 30 to 35. The Lord your God who goes before you will himself fight on your behalf, just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes, and in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carries you, just as a man carries his son, in all the way which you have walked until you come to this place. But for all this you did not trust the Lord your God, who goes before you on your way to seek out a place for you, to encamp in fire by night and cloud by day, to show you the way in which you should go. Then the Lord heard the sound of your words, and he was angry and took an oath, saying, Not one of these men, this evil generation, shall see the good land which I swore to give your fathers. So think about this. God had freed them, purchased and redeemed them, made them for the tribe of his inheritance, so that they might serve him and give him praise, and that, as Deuteronomy says, he went out before them during this time to lead them to the promised land. He <clears throat> showed them wondrous signs. He went before them on their way. He sought out a place for them. He instructed them in the way they which they should go. But for all of this, for having been freed, having been bought, having been purchased, having been ransomed, having been uh, set, cap set free from captivity, they still did not trust in the Lord. But for all this, they did not trust in the Lord. Only those that trusted in him were saved and entered his rest. Romans 10, 16. However, they did not all heed the good news. Here, the good news is actually referring to the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message. Hebrews 4, 2. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us, just as they also, and this is referencing those in the wilderness of Egypt. But the word they heard did not profit them, because it was not united by faith in those who heard. So they refused to listen and act on the Lord's word and his instruction. And because of that, they had rebelled against the spirit of God. Psalm 106, 33 says, Because they were rebellious against his spirit, he spoke rashly with his lips. Isaiah 63.10 says, But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore he turned himself to become their enemy. He fought against them. Zechariah 7.12 says, They made their hearts like flints, so that they could not hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his Spirit through the former prophets. Therefore great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Acts 7.51 says, You men who are stiff-necked and un uncircumcised in heart and ears are always resisting the Holy Spirit. You are doing just as your fathers did. So these people had been freed, had been set, <clears throat> had been purchased, bought, redeemed, ransomed, etc., all so that they might serve the Lord, and he would go before them and lead them to the promised land. 
And all he wanted was them to trust in him and walk in his ways. And they refused to listen. And because they refused to listen, that's why they received God's wrath. Deuteronomy 32, 5-6 says, They have acted corruptly toward him. They are not his children because of their defect. So they would have been his children had they not had this defect. What was the defect? That they refused to listen. That they didn't obey his voice and walk by faith. <clears throat> Ezekiel 28, But they rebelled against me and were not willing to listen to me. They did not cast away the detestable things of their eyes, and they did not forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I resolved to pour out my wrath on them, to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. Exodus 20:21. 20, but they, but the children rebelled against me. They did not walk in my statutes, nor were they careful to observe my ordinances, by which, if a man observes them, he will live. They profaned my Sabbath, so I resolved to pour out my wrath on them, to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Again, look at this picture that we have of Israel, the entire nation of Israel, and what the Exodus accomplished and the language used for the for the whole thing. They were all freed and purchased and bought and redeemed and ransomed to be the tribe of his inheritance. God freed them all. He, he, he removed the captivity. He removed that bondage that they had so that they might serve him. And in the wilderness, he led them. He walked uh, He walked with them. He offered to lead them, uh, to give them manna. He offered to give them water. He offered it that they would enter his rest. But those who refused to obey, who did not listen to his word, who did not walk by faith, they did not enter his rest. So they were not all saved. Only those who trusted in him received the promise of the promised land that entered his rest those who didn't who rejected that offer who didn't walk by faith they're the ones that god's wrath poured upon he had passed over in judging them initially offered them salvation they rejected that salvation so his wrath came luke 4 18 this is the exact same language that we have of christ and the cross Luke 4, 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed. That's what the Lord did for every single person on the planet. Proclaim release to the captives, to set free those who are oppressed. And to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. John 1, 29, The next day he saw Jesus coming and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This was when John the Baptist saw Christ coming. And he sees him and he says, he, he references him being the Lamb of God, which all the Israelites would have would have uh, understood that he was referring to the Exodus, the Passover lamb that was put, you know, the blood of the lamb that was put over the doorposts. Christ was the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of the world. This doesn't mean that every person's sins are forgiven. It's just that they, they've been put aside, they've been passed over so that men can be freed from oppression and trust in the Lord and walk and might serve him. This is exactly what the cross accomplished. Uh, we also have, he is a savior of all men, especially believers, 1 Timothy 4.10. For it is this we labor and strive because we have fixed our hope on the living God, who is a savior of all men, especially believers. So how can Christ, the Lord, be the savior of all men, specifically believers? Because through his death, he purchased all men. He bought all men. He, re he de redeemed all men. He ransomed all men. He bought all men to be the tribe of his inheritance. He bought all men so that they might serve him. He bought all men so that he could lead them to the promised land. That's how he is a savior. All men, God is overlooking their sin right now and being patient with them. So thus, they are saved immediately from his judgment. However, should they refuse to listen and they act corruptly, then... They will not enter his rest. But those who believe in him, who trust in him, he is he redeems them completely. He sanctifies them completely. They will be conformed to the image of the Son. Uh, he is not only the propiti propitiation for our sins, but of the whole world. 1 John 2.20 And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the whole world. If you go and look in the context of 1 John, you'll see, if you look at the world and, and who John refers to as the world, you will see that this encompasses everyone, believers and those of the world. So Christ actually purchased and bought and redeemed and ransomed the whole entire world. As with the exact language used with the Old Testament and the Lord's dealing with dealing with and freeing Israel from the Egypt, the Lord purchased us. Acts 20:28. 20, Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Revelation 5, 9. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood, men from every tribe and every tongue and people and nation. Christ also redeemed us 
same language that we have of Israel. Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. 1 Peter 1.18, Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things, like silver or gold, from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers. Again, he purchased and redeemed us. He also bought us. 1 Corinthians 6.20, For you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. What did we, what did we see that God said of Israel, all of Israel? He, he purchased them and bought them. Why? So that they might serve him. They might glorify him. That's exactly what 1 Corinthians 6.20 says. For you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 7.23, You were bought with a price. Do not become slaves of men. Just like Israel, when they were out in the wilderness, some of them refused to listen and they wanted to go back to their slavery. That's what Christ, that's what Paul is saying here. You were brought with a price. Do not become slaves of men. Do not reject the offer of the Lord. Do not reject being um, uh, being led to the promised land. Don't turn and, and trust in your flesh and trust in men. But understand that you've been bought with a price. So now fear the Lord and glorify him. He even bought those who deny him, Second Peter 2, one. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers among you, who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. So these false teachers and false prophets were even purchased by Christ, because Christ purchased all. The nation of Israel is a shadow of all mankind. Like all of Israel, again, all of Israel, Christ purchased, bought, and rescued every man so that we might serve him without fear. Again, the nation of Israel is a shadow of every person on earth. How God dealt with them and what God gave them and what God called them to do is what God has called every single person on the planet to do. He's given us this word that if we trust in him, he will save us. He has given us the law. All of us have the law written on our hearts. We understand good from evil. We understand that we can't meet that standard. We understand that that because we can't meet that standard, he's going to judge us. And we know that we can't do it on our own. So we have to just humble ourselves and to trust in him. Again, Christ purchased, bought, and rescued every man so that we might serve him without fear. Luke 1, 72, 75. To show mercy towards our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham our father, to grant us that we being rescued from the hands of our enemies, i.e. freed from slavery of bondage, right? To grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Why did he Why did he free us from the hands of our enemies? So that we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him in all our days. Also, so that we might be saved through him. John 3, 17. For God, not, God did not send... The, the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Again, all of Israel was rescued and freed from Egypt so that they might serve the Lord and might be bought, brought to God through him. First Peter 3.18 For Christ also died for the sins once for all, the just or the unjust, so that we might, or sorry, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. The Father is in the promised land. He's in the promised land waiting for us, and the Son is leading us through the wilderness. He's offering to lead all of us through the wilderness, offering us the, he leads us through the spirit, right? That's why Christ left, so the spirit could lead us. And he offers us the the manna and the water. He is, his His work on the cross is the body. It is the manna of heaven. His word is the living water that we drink. This is the perfect picture of the cross. So that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose on our behalf. Second Corinthians 5, 14 to 15. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Again, he died for all, so that those who live, who are currently passed over in their sin, might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Exactly the same language that we have of Israel, who was freed so that they might serve the Lord, so that they could be offered salvation, so they could enter his rest. But only those that trust in him inherit the promise. Christ's death isn't... So often you say, well, did Christ die so people could possibly save, or did he die to actually save people? The answer is yes on both accounts. Christ died so that we all could be passed over in our sin, which is what Romans 3.25 says, is that he passes over our sin, right? God, Christ died on the cross so God could be just in, in being patient with us and passing over our sin and offering salvation to us. 
That's one of the reasons Christ died. He also died for those who have actually put trust in him already. And those people who have been set apart in Christ, Christ died for them too and actually accomplished the work. All those Old Testament sayings before the cross that had been set apart in Christ because of their faith, when Christ died, he actually completed his work for them. Their possibility of salvation came through his cross and their actualization of their salvation came through his cross. That is the complete work of Christ on the cross. His work allows God to pass over all sin right now and be uh, the person who offers us salvation, to be the person who leads us to the promised land. And those who do, his death covers completely and washes completely our sin, and we will be redeemed. So that is the message of the cross through the Bible. So I want you guys to just to think about this and uh, and so often this is confused of like did Christ actually buy you know purchase salvation uh, yes he purchased salvation for everyone but but not all believe right because he purchased all so that all could be passed over and offered salvation just like he did with Egypt uh, and in Israel they were all freed so that they might serve the Lord and that he might offer them salvation and he might lead them to the promised land but only those who trust in him inherited the promise that is the atonement that is the cross that is the central cornerstone of everything that we have is based on the cross and his work. No man would be alive today for the, without the cross. In the Old Testament, no man would have been um, passed over in sin without the cross. All are saved through the cross presently, and all those who trust in the Lord will be saved eternally. All right, with that, you can find us at BibleBrowdown at gmail.com. If you have any questions or comments on this, you can um, email us at BibleBrowdown at, Bible at gmail.com. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's something that is always on my heart because so many people just conflate what the cross did. Uh, again, love to hear your comments, and until next time.